Hey, Prime Timers, what's going on? It's Dominic, the Prime Time Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. In this video, we are going to go over the top 10 most expensive and most profitable items that sold in my eBay store for the month of September 2019. For the third straight month, we are going to cover items that sold for over $100 and I have very little into these items. Many of them you will recognize if you have been watching uh, my haul videos, you're gonna see some of these items uh, surface in terms of sales. So if you are interested in increasing your average sale price for your items, this is a good video to watch and you will see that I got these items at various locations and they are in various categories. So with that being said, let's jump into the first one here. Uh, these are six uh, unused that are new, uh, far side daily off the wall calendars. They go from various years from 1995 uh, all the way up to 2002. I found these relatively recently at an estate sale. You may remember me picking them right off of the bookshelf as soon as I got into the house and plopping them right into the box and I got them for just a couple of dollars. I took a best offer on this for $125. They were a little difficult to comp and figure out exactly how much I would get out of them, but because they were uh, unused, I said, oh my gosh, these definitely are gonna sell. Uh, because even if you found them with the actual um, little uh, pages pulled off, they still will sell pulled off, but with them being on and being unused, that's you know that's great. Uh, this is what they look like if you haven't seen these before. Although many of you grew up with these in the 1990s and the 2000s, here's a little zoom up uh, for you right here. And basically, you would just pull off each day to be a page, and it would give you uh, a little cartoon for the day, something to laugh at, you know, get you started. I had these when I was a kid, and I'm sure many of you did uh, as well. Uh, fortunately, they don't make them anymore, at least that I've seen. Uh, but if you could find them, this is the indication inside that they are new and haven't been used is because they're uh, usually going to have this ribbon around them that hasn't been removed at all. Now, these two had the ribbon removed, but if you flip through them, you will see that uh, none of them were uh, none of them were used at all. So none of them were torn out, anything like that. And you can see here uh, when I advertise it, I give different perspectives for the viewer. I don't just put up the one picture. Uh, people who are collecting these things like to see them at different angles. And so I just put up what the most common angles people would want to see these types of thing uh, as. So people will buy them as collectors. They also will buy them for nostalgia reasons. They remember, you know, having a particular calendar in the 90s and they want to kind of relive that and flip through it and see those funny cartoons and jokes, you know, that they saw as a kid. So uh, that is why people will pay up for far side uh, daily off the wall calendars. Now I did have a double. Uh, this one here, I had a double of. So there were seven total and I just sold the other one separately. And I think I wound up getting around 25 bucks for the single calendar, something around there, 25, $30, something like that. So they will sell individually, but if you could get them in a lot like this, definitely pick them up. So let's go over to number nine, Mad Magazines. You have seen me cover these before and I have told you about that these are big, big money. If you could get these from the 1980s, 1970s or prior. Now, if Esme's watching this, which I know she is, uh, I posted these on inter Instagram when I sold them and she said, I see what you're doing there. You're putting uh, you know, right up front for that first image, right in that first row for people to see what would be the juiciest titles, the ones that would stand out the most. And that's exactly what I am doing. It's a marketing strategy. It's trying to draw people's attention in. So I'm not just showing one magazine. I'm showing all of the magazines at first and then the ones right in the front i'm making sure those are ones that are iconic so we've got yoda we've got the seven dwarves we've got you know back to the future with uh, michael j fox and doc we've got the garbage pail kids ghostbusters that's for a reason not all of those covers are iconic for example there's a difference with me putting up those as the six versus if I put up these as the first six. These are not going to draw people in as much. Now, I'm obviously going to show them, but for drawing people in, this is what you want with that first picture. So just think of that as a strategy. I like to pass on strategies uh, during these Bolo videos as well. I have the one main big picture, and then what I do is I just break them out and I just divide them 
you know, when I uh, when I show them in little chunks like this, little manageable chunks, usually six, sometimes four. It really just depends on how many issues are there. You could see I had it up for one fifty nine ninety nine, and I wound up selling it for one twenty nine. Uh, so one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine on these. So uh, basically one hundred thirty dollars. So. Uh, I picked these up at various times during the year. You saw my haul videos. I wound up getting them at uh, flea markets, and I also wound up getting these at um, uh, at estate sales as well. So there are a lot of different places where I have uh, uh, found these. And I recently uh, picked up a whole big uh, bunch of these from a collectibles dealer that I deal with locally. So there's lots of different places where you can find them. Try to get them for a buck or less, and if you buy them in bulk, you could definitely uh, get them for less than a dollar. So don't pay up crazy amounts for them, because uh, so, you want to make sure that you're making, you know, you're having a nice profit margin on those. So Mad Magazines, I'm sure this is not the last time you're going to see them, but they're going to be even more collectible because recently I just announced that they are not going to uh, produce Mad Magazines, you know, in paper format like this anymore. Uh, that is gone. That is done, at least for now. So they're going to be even more collectible and sought after. Uh, these you have also seen before in some prior haul videos, but people are always new coming to my channel, so it's good to show these again. Whenever I could cobble these lots together, I definitely do so. And this is the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars series. Uh, this is the one you really want to find. There's a number one and a number two. This is number one. There's tw uh, there's 12 issues to it. Uh, this one over here is the most expensive of the issues because it has Spider-Man in the black outfit. So if you just found this one, number eight, you would want to try to sell this one by itself. A lot of times when you come across Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars, which was it's just an iconic, amazing, incredible series bringing together all of these different superheroes in a way that was never done before prior to this. So this is one of the reasons why this story is so cool, you know, bringing together all of these characters before they made any of the modern movies that they're doing now with, you know, Civil War and Endgame and all that stuff. This is when they were doing this stuff. Uh, originally, they had team up issues before that where they team up characters and they had a comic uh, title called Marvel Team Up. Uh, but this is the first time they brought together this many characters to fight against a uh, common enemy and common enemies. So, uh, whenever I could cobble these together, even if they're not in mint condition, so this is a mid to high grade lot, so that means there's some cosmetic flaws on them. I wound up taking a best offer of $135 on this, so $134.99, so just $10 bucks off of uh, where I uh, had it. Now, sometimes uh, when you're out, you're only going to see, for example, uh, maybe you know issues one, two, and three, or maybe you'll find issue three and issue seven. I pick them up no matter when I could find them, and regardless of the condition. I have a whole bunch sitting next to me uh, to my left right now, which are uh, low-grade condition books, but people will still buy them. They'll buy the collection in low-grade condition. They're not going to pay as much as 135 but they'll still pay them if you have all 12 because they want to read the stories. They, they, you know, they want to, you know, maybe they never saw it before. Maybe they're getting it again for nostalgia reasons. And for collectors, by the way, you can see here, I will sometimes show the backs because people uh, like to see those if they're buying collector sets. And if they're going to spend this type of money, I will sometimes show the backs of the, of the covers. In fact, I'll always show it if it's expensive comics for uh, lower, you know, less expensive comics. I won't do that, but it just depends, uh, depends on the issues for treasury size comic books, big, giant, oversized books. People like to see the backs of those because they don't have advertisements on the back of them. They actually have really cool pictures of the superhero characters. So that's a different story. That's an example of lower price comics that I would show uh, the backs of. But you know, people will spend money on these no matter no matter what. There is a Secret Wars uh, Part 2, but it does not sell for nearly as much uh, as this one. So make sure you're not getting confused between the Part 2 and the Part 1. All right, that's that one right there. Let's go over to this one. This was a recent sale. I love Peanuts. I love Snoopy. I grew up reading these uh, books all the time. In fact, I used to check Snoopy books out of the library when I was a kid, the public library, the school library. I read so many Snoopy books and Peanuts books. I mean, I absolutely love this series. I love the cartoon. I love watching the cartoons. Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, you know, the Char Charlie Brown Halloween special, Great Pumpkin, all that stuff. I love it. And if you could find these little lots, and again, pay attention to what I'm saying here. Don't make the mistake of thinking you always have to have everything in perfect condition. You don't. Look at this. I have lots of ones that are damaged right here, and I'll even zoom up closer into them with some closer uh, uh, pictures, and you'll see 
that there are ones that, like there's a big crease, there's a stain to that one. These sold, by the way, for the price you see there, $150. That's what I had it for, and that's what somebody bought it for. And I have basically almost nothing into this. I got this at one of my private estate sale picks. I've talked about this before. I set up these ads on Craigslist. A lady contacted me. Uh, she asked me to come and help clear out the estate, and I just start grabbing stuff, just grabbing stuff, pulling all these off of the shelf. And by the way, I have doubles of these and I'm going to list a smaller lot of the doubles. Now with the doubles, the ones that were uh, uh, in better condition, like for example, let me let me go over here and I'll, and I'll show you an example right here. So like if you see over here, you see how these have damage. Like, look at that Snoopy one. It has all sorts of scuff marks on it. And this one here I have a double of. She likes you, Charlie Brown. You see that? It's got all these creases and everything. Well, the one that I have a double of is in great condition. Why didn't I take that one and put it into here? The reason for that is this lot is big enough so you could sneak in ones. And I, when I say sneak in, I, I don't mean that you're being duplicitous with the, with the buyers because you are displaying it, you are showing it, and you are acknowledging that they're there. But what I mean by that is you could get away with putting in some damaged items into a bigger lot that has items that are... Um, you know, one voluminous, there's a lot of them in there, but also uh, there are plenty of, of them in here that are in great condition. So people will take some that have some damage in it if they know they're getting a bunch that don't have damage in it. Now, the reason why I pulled out those other ones, those doubles, and I took all of the best condition doubles and I put them separate as a lot is because when I want to sell just a smaller stack, so instead of selling 50, I'd say I probably have like 10 or so of those. I don't want those to be damaged because there I have less leeway with the buyer because I only have 10. I don't have 50. So I have to be careful that those are the ones that are in better condition. So I hope that that tip helps people because you're when you buy lots, there are going to be times where you're going to come across doubles and don't just throw the doubles out. Uh, don't you know, try now. Well, here's one thing I will tell you. I, I usually say not to put doubles into lots. However, one exception to this, and I'm going to show you this too, and this is just psychological strategy here. Uh, this, uh, she likes you, Charlie Brown. I think I actually have three of those. So another one I have as a, um, as a double somewhere uh, for that other lot that I'm going to put up. But there is another one here of that. Where is it? Let me see. Yeah, there's two on the bottom row. You see that one there? And that one there. Now, why did I do that? And I disclosed, by the way, there's one double. I usually like it to make a selling point that I don't have any doubles, that there's no duplicates. However, here's the option. You advertise that you have 49 books with no doubles, or you advertise that you have a lot of 50 books, and then in the description, say you have one double. Trust me, the number 50, when you're trying to sell things in a lot, if you could say you have 50 of them, is even though it's only one more, is much more preferable to buyers than if you say 49. That There's just something about certain numbers that people glom onto, and they feel like they're getting 50 of something. It's just uh, you know something that helps close the sale better. So that's why in this one case, this is a rare instance where I decided to include a double. Normally, again, I would take that out. Uh, now, for all the ladies who are watching this, and uh, not that ladies don't like Snoopy, plenty of you do and uh, may like some of the other items that I show, but this item you really like, uh, this one here is the Revo uh, Styler Rotating Cordless Hair Styling Straightener. Now, this is one I actually didn't source anywhere. Mrs. Primetime actually had this sitting around for 20 or so years. Uh, she got this as a gift uh, many years ago, and she took it out of the box once. I don't believe uh, it was uh, ever used. Maybe it was used once. I think I say it was used once. She used it once, and, and that was it. Uh, this one sold for $150. So had it up for $200, sold it for $150. Again, we really didn't have anything into it. She just had it sitting around. So go around, check those closets. You have no idea what might be sitting in there. I mean, Mrs. Primetime said to me when, and I'll just show you the contents inside and stuff. Uh, she was, there were several times where she was just thinking of, um, you know, maybe giving it away, donating it. But look, that's $150 right there. Now, if you're wondering, 
why is it that something like this sells? Uh, one, it's vintage, and there are people who swore by this product and that it was the only type of product that wound up getting out those uh, those tough curls. Plus, by the way, anything that is vintage and has to do with uh, hairstyling, hairdressing, that kind of stuff, uh, will sell for good money. So old hair blowers, I have some of those around. Anything related to that, if you see that out at sales, this is the exact type of thing that someone might pass up. But if you see it, pick it up. People will pay good money for this item. Again, $150 sale. Uh, this one here, this is uh, one of the many trains that I purchased. Uh, for those of you who are brand new uh, to my channel, uh, you have to go to the video that I did called Picking Under Pressure, and you will see me get a huge lot of... Um, uh, to, of, of trains um, and including uh, some estate sale items as well. I got the all the trains. Many of them were these LGB ones right here that you see. Uh, these are the oversized G scale trains. Those sell the best by far. Also, O size trains will will sell well. Also, uh, this particular one wound up selling for hundred and sixty dollars, so it took a best offer. You want to make sure, by the way, with these things that if there's pieces that would move uh, up and down, like this one here, that you uh, that you display it and that you show that it that it actually works and show all parts of the train. Show every side. Show the bottom. Show the top. Give Give an overhead perspective, give a bottom perspective. Trust me, train collectors are going to want to see that stuff, and they're also going going to want to see any uh, information you have about the box quality because people are, you know, are collectors and they like to display things in their boxes, plus outside of the boxes as well. So make sure you include all those things. But I picked up uh, all of the trains plus all the estate sale contents for $432, sold one of the Lionel uh, train sets for $600, so I got all my money back without one sale, so every other train you have seen me sell from that point forwards has been all profit. Uh, for those of you who have uh, been watching my videos for a while, I'm sorry for, to continue to repeat that story, but remember there's people brand new who are watching me for the first time, so I wanna make sure I explain this stuff. And speaking of explaining stuff, uh, this goes back to my Star Wars uh, haul video, so check that one out. That was done about a month or, or so ago where I went down uh, in an estate sale. I asked the people outside if they were selling anything related to comics. The guy said, well, do you like Star Wars stuff? I said, yep. Went right down the stairs. You'll see the whole thing in the video. I walk in the back of a crawl space. They had just unearthed. Um, you know, all this stuff that was blocking all of these Star Wars toys for decades in the original boxes is an absolutely crazy score. If Chris Cernock is watching this, uh, he keeps telling me that he's continuously amazed by this score and how much it's paying off. And uh, this is another example of it. This one, this is uh, the Darth Vader uh, TIE Fighter right here. So this is the black one, the dark one that Darth Vader uses in the movies. Uh, this one here, and you can see here, it still, uh, it still works in a sense in that the light works. Now, there is a sound it's supposed to make, but the sound does not work on it. But even so, it's still sold for $175 uh, with the original box. The, uh, you know, really one of the big keys to this is having the box. Even if the box has some damage, even if the box is scuffed up a little bit, and the box isn't perfect. I mean, it's not a bad box. Don't worry about the stickers. And by the way, as a tip, do not peel off the original stickers. Don't think because the original cost of this item, uh, you know, back in the 1970s was $10.94 that all of a sudden someone's going to say, I'm not going to pay $175 for it. It doesn't work that way. So people will still pay. They actually like the original sticker. And you can see here, look, there's tape on it. There's some box wear. I mean, it's not terrible, but there. look at this. There's a rip on this side, okay? Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Just try to fix it up as best as you can in terms of how you present it. But people are still going to pay up for vintage Star Wars all day of the week. Absolutely. This one usually goes for a little bit more than the regular TIE Fighters that you see in the gray slash uh, white color. Uh, so now let's move over to our top three. Uh, you may remember this. This was from one of my earlier uh, garage sale hauls this uh, this year. Uh, I went and there was a woman who had a big box of muscle magazines. Let me zoom in on it so you could see it. This particular one is muscle power. So you could see uh, these are all vintage ones right here. I mean, look how cool these are. Just awesome poses, just awesome pictures, awesome hairdos. 
just a nice vintage look uh, to the magazines. Now this is just one small sample. What I did is I took them out and I organized them by title. So Muscle Power was one grouping. There were 38 of the Muscle Powers from 1950 to 1954. I want, she wanted $20 for the whole box. She had picked it out of a barn. She had nothing invested into it. She moved into the house. There was a barn back there. She found this box. She took it out, had 20 bucks on it. And you'll see, I asked if she'll do $10 on it. So, and she said, fine. She did $10 on the whole box, just this loan. This is the actual sale price. And these are damaged, by the way. They sold for $220 at a garage sale. So look at this one to the left. It's all ripped and everything. I'll even zoom in on a little bit more uh, on a close-up. So I think that's one of the key points I hope people get out of this video. Even if things have tape on it, there's damage for these vintage paper items, depending on what they are people will still pay up for it. And it really is just the law of supply and demand. People will pay up for damage if it's high demand and there's not a lot of supply because that's the condition that they could get it in. So they will pay for it. So uh, that's just a key point to understand, you know, just economically with how things are going to work in reselling. And I have sold other lots. I, I've, this was the last lot that I wound up selling. I just put this up at the end. But I sold a whole bunch of other lots out of there, some for over 100 bucks. There were fans magazines in there from the 1970s some of them that I sold for close to uh, I don't know like 75 bucks or something like that it was just a crazy score for ten dollars so you know very very little invested into these things at all uh, number two this one here comes from the poster hall a lot of things have been selling from the poster hall uh, so thanks all of you who have supported uh, that there have been a couple uh, YouTube watchers and people in the Facebook group who have uh, picked up some things from here uh, this one jumped out at me when I saw it you may think when you look at it that this is from uh, that this is from a, uh, a music band or something or like a heavy metal magazine uh, but it is not this actually is an advertisement a uh, poster for a book by Linda Barry, which you could see uh, right down here is called Big Ideas. Now this uh, came out in 1982 and it came from, uh, and I'll actually zoom in on so you could see it right here, a company called Real Comet Press, Seattle. A lot of coffee shops in Seattle. Anything that you see with Real Comet Press on it, you definitely want to pick it up, especially if it's vintage, if it's from the 80s. Uh, people grab these things for nostalgia purposes. They remember sitting in the coffee shops and, or in their college dorm rooms having these things pinned up and then they either got damaged or ripped or lost and they're trying to recover it and there's not that many of them around anymore so people pay up big money for this I've seen this one sell for up to $295 now uh, just a little point to put up if you uh, remember from the video where I got all the posters and all the other estate sale items for just $50 in that old barn check out the video if you didn't see it it's it's uh, it has the term in there uh, like posters from the barn in the middle of nowhere check out that video you'll actually see me unroll this one so I already have all my money back and I'm in profit by the time that I sold this one and someone offered me $90 on it so this is such an important concept that I need resellers to understand who are watching this, especially if you are brand new. Now, if you want to just take the $90, that's fine. I mean, that's okay. I totally understand it. You have nothing into it. But someone offered me $90. I just flat out declined it because I know what the comps are for this item. I know that this is something that should sell for over $200. So even though it sounds like a lot, right, $90, what sounds better? $225 sure sounds a lot better, and I wound up getting the, the $225. That's why I had it up for, uh, and that's what the person paid for it. No, no questions asked, no offers, nothing like that. Just bought it at the $225. So I always say, look at your data, look to see if there's a track record for that, and you know if you can make double the amount of money or almost triple the amount of money or two and a half times the amount of money just by waiting another week, why not do that? Um, you don't need to accept those first offers. Even if they seem high relative to what you have into it, um, you know, it still could be worth it just to, to, to pay off and to, uh, you know, just bring some more uh, profit into your business. Because then you could take that extra money and you could reinvest it into yourself and into your business with new inventory, supplies, all sorts of things. And that brings us to the number one item that's sold in the month of September. It's this one here. This is again one of the trains. It's the LGB uh, train uh, right here in the box. It's got um, 
Uh, it's a from a, it's a it's a it's a West Germany one. It's really neat. This one sold for the asking price that you are seeing there. It sold for three hundred dollars, no questions asked. I think I showed this last week in one of my videos before I was ready to go out and uh, do some treasure hunting. So, uh, but this is the close up of it because I just had it in the box at the time and I wasn't able to uh, take it out and show it to you. But I'll show you a few other angles uh, to it. Uh, but you know, the key thing I want to pass on to this, if you're new to trains, again, it's oversized trains are the ones that people are really looking for. They really go for big money. If you could get a big lot of them, spend some money on them. And again, just to again, reinforce another point, there are things in here that are broken. So you see this light right here, this light snapped off of the front. Uh, it's supposed to be Actually, you see how there's a light right there, right there on that uh, top left corner? Well, that light is supposed to be uh, over here on the right corner, and it's not there because it's snapped off. You see, here it is here, but if I flip it around to the other side, you're not going to see it. It broke off, and uh, here it is right there. It's supposed to be right there. See that? Broke right off of that those top slats there. But guess what? Person still paid $300 because people who buy trains... Uh, they like to tinker around. They'll glue that thing back on, no problem. Uh, they don't really care all that much. I mean, sure, you know, if you have enough damage on it, is it going to matter? Yeah, we'll take the value down some. But again, key point in this whole video is you can make big money reselling even with damaged items. Don't be scared to source those types of things. And remember, too, when you are buying big lots of items, I don't care if it's a big lot of trains. I don't care if it's a big lot of uh, magazines like this, and certainly, you know, if it's a big lot of, um, let's say, comic books or ebooks like this, you are inevitably going to find damage. It's very rare that you're going to buy a big lot and you're going to have a perfect mint condition set for everything. Sometimes you could do that, but a lot of times you're going to have damage. Don't just toss those items out unless they're just severely damaged that there's absolutely nothing you could do with it and they were worthless to begin with. Sometimes you'll get that with paper items, comic books. They're ripped up, shredded up. You just can't do anything with it. They're infested with mold. There's just no way you could sell it. Yes, sometimes you're going to get that, but other times you could take those items, work them into the lot, and you could still sell them and people will still buy them either singly like this or individually. Well, that's about it, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like seeing all of the uh, all these bolos and uh, you know just seeing all different types of information for items that you could also go out there and find. They were in all sorts of different categories. Uh, diversify, especially if you're brand new. Start branching in, experimenting with different things. Uh, you know, just dabble a little bit, put your foot into something else. Try comic books a little bit. Try trains. You know, try um, you know vintage paper items. You know, if you don't do clothes like myself, I didn't always used to do clothes. Try clothes. Just try and experiment each year. You know, try a little something new, and you will see the results pay off in your reselling business. So I hope that you all like this video. Uh, if so, make sure you smash that like button. We are getting very close to 8,000 subs. I'm super pumped up about that. We're still on track to possibly hit 10K by the end of the year. So uh, help me get there. If you found this information useful, spread it around. Tell some other people about it. Tell them to come over. Check out uh, the Primetime Treasure Hunter YouTube channel. Come by to the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. We just hit 12,000 members in that group uh, yesterday. And come over to the Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you all back at the next video, everybody. Take care.